Now, in 2001, the American Journal of Periodontology and also in the Clinical Microbiology Reviews in 2000, it was stated that there are three pathways. Now, when I was in dental school, it was thought that we'd get a little infection here, the infection would travel to different parts of our body, and I'm being real simplistic on this. We thought it was more involved than that, but we did not know the different pathways. We were taught you could get a problem around the heart if uh, you had a certain bacteria and it might cause a problem, and if you had heart valve risk, there would be further problems, but the research has gotten a lot more intricate than, than that. So in this one, it states that there are three pathways. Number one, there's invasion of the gram-negative bacteria that I talked about through the epithelial lining of the periodontal pockets. Number two, we have the effects of the circulating toxins of those periodontal pathogens. They give off LPS lipopolysaccharides. Number three, inflammation caused by the immunologic response to the pathogens and their toxins cause a lot of problems. And actually, that's where the research has gone lately. There are these things in our body called toll-like receptors, and they line the vessels throughout our body, and they're part of the the uh, bringing out body's inflammation to fight things we don't like. And I'm being very simple here, but when we have things in those blood vessels and in, the, in our circulatory system that uh, the body doesn't like, the toll-like receptors give off cytokines. And if you think of the word cytokine, that's one of the most reported on subjects in cardiovascular disease research. So in other words, bad bacteria enter us through periodontal pockets, they release toxins into our systems. Also, our own bodies set off an inflammatory response to both of the above. Now, when I was in dental school, and also most of my professional career, I thought we had these immune systems that would just be the wall. Nothing gets past it. If you had a reduced immune system, that's where things got past the wall. But you're going to see in a little bit that that's not true. So this is another one of those groundbreaking research papers that I think is going to be looked at, it's already being looked at as important, but when we go 10 years down the line and look back, this is a huge deal. Science Signaling Journal 2010, and this was, I believe, out of the University of Louisville. It was found that Porphyromonas gingivalis, PG, sabotages the immune system. So where's that wall? That wall between here and the rest of us. Well, the bacteria that we want to be guarding against now has been shown to sabotage that immune system, and therefore it promotes inflammation for its own survival. Now, I can go through all of this, but you will save that for another day, but you'll notice, you know, it, it, the toll-like TLR2s or toll-like receptors, the C5A receptors, all of those are part of that progression. And the end result of this is PG, Porphyromonas gingivalis, is transforming white blood cells from destroyers. That's that wall, that's that Im immune system. It, the white blood cells are supposed to come in and destroy them. PG has figured out a way to turn them into carriers. Now that's a big deal because we've got one of those things that we think we're fighting and it's actually turning into the little stinker that's, that's actually carrying things around in us. So that, that is one, that's where the barrier breaks. I also believe this one is very important, because remember I told you in the past, visually, if you look like you have a healthy mouth, most of the time it was always considered that there was no way any problems could be coming from that. And so if you did research 20 years ago, you didn't know how to find these bacteria. You also didn't know that they would be present in shallower pockets. How can a bacteria that hates oxygen live in a shallow pocket? Well, this, just out in the Archives of Oral Biology in 2014, shows us two things that are really astonishing to me. Number one, this I did not know, so keep learning. You, you find something out every day. But the number one stress-related hormone is cortisol. I did know that. And it's uh, one of the main molecules released during human stress. I did know that. I mean, I knew it was found in plasma, and I knew that, well, you know, you, you, once again, you, you can't go through a day without seeing something saying reduce your cortisol, you'll probably lose some weight. It's a sign of stress. We're in a stressful society and stress is elevated, blah, blah, blah. Cortisol is involved with that. What I did not know was that the fluid around those pockets and the, around the teeth actually releases cortisol. 
I, did, I had no idea. This is a big deal because of the next statement. That cortisol significantly increased the porphyromonas gingivalis or PG growth. So here we have a bug that usually needs to be living in a deep pocket. If there's cortisol being released, it survives and it thrives. And it's almost like putting gasoline on a fire. So that becomes once more an expansion of this idea. So we've got some problems here, some microbial problems. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about how some of those have a, a correlation with, with the heart. So I want to show you this again. Remember, going from the left, cross-section of a very healthy vessel around the heart, going all the way to the right where someone's throwing a clot and having a, a heart attack. Now, in those walls, you can see some little white dots showing up as you progress through different stages of disease. Macrophages go in. They're the body's system, to tr one of the body's systems to try to eat up things we don't like. And there is a progression from those being sent in to foam cells, and that research has been around for a long time. And as foam cells progress through their various stages of, of disease, we get deposits and we get increased problems in the wall. And then eventually certain materials are released. The MPO that's up there on a more advanced level, MPO is a lot like a chlorine bleach. It's real hot. If that's being released, your body's really got a bad spot there. And inflammation comes in. To make it real simple, you could think that it's so hot that the body needs to heal it. If I had a, a sore here that, that was as acidic as chlorine bleach, you know I'd be getting some kind of inflammatory response from my body trying to say, hey, let's fix you. So that's a real simplified way to look at it. But as you progress along the way, there's different stages. So I'm going to go ahead and next go through the ways that oral pathogens are involved with that progression. <laughs>